the market. And, oh, your Steelers are they're five and seven. Mm -hmm. They've won, count them, two in a row. First time. First time. Mm -hmm. They are four and four when Kenny starts, and the list of teams in those four losses is also a list of some of the National Football League's elite. Yeah. How good is your head coach feeling about everything right now? Oh, uh, well, if you click on the Steelers website, you will see a very chipper smile of Coach Mike Tomlin at his weekly press conference, which those can be real bland, real blah, real straight Especially face. for him, yeah. Yeah, especially when you have a clip of him from Atlanta telling the guy, hey, man, I'm bleeping working right now. <laughs> because that's what he does. People were tagging me in that this week. Uh and it was him walking to the back and, and I guess doing his halftime adjustments. But that's just his mind, though. You know, it's it's him being in that mode all the doggone time as far as just coaching, coaching up guys, trying to find ways to win. I can say whether you, you like Coach T or not or you don't like his methods or however you want to go about it, the guy wants to coach. The guy loves to coach. The guy, Coach Tomlin, is a coach first and foremost that wants to win games. You know how the pendulum swings in this league as far as good, bad, rosters, quarterback, defense, offense. Uh, but to have a steady eddy of a guy and him that ultimately feels the same way as the fan base, look, I just want to win. That's a good place to be at, man. And like you said, to lose some games to some of the NFL's best teams when you know, I think we all can be honest with ourselves, knowing that you don't stack up in a sense. Um, that right there is just part of the job, and it's a matter of how long that grace lasts and how quickly he can get things turned around, too, though, DK. Do you remember when he went to ten, two and six? Well, the Steelers did, not him, <laughs> but him, too. Yeah, I, I do. I was a part of one of those teams going mm -hmm. two and six. It was miserable, man. Mm -hmm. I ain't no other way around it. And guess nope. what we finished the season with? Eight and eight. Eight and eight. So this two and six, I don't remember where we were. Was that Philadelphia? It was Philadelphia. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, I asked him afterward about, you know, what it was like being in uncharted territory. And rather than answer the question, mm -hmm. maybe because I asked it at this point, <laughs> he looks over at me and says, what do you mean? And I go, you know, uncharted territory, two and six. And he goes, I believe I've been there before. Mm -hmm. So instead of giving me an answer about being da 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 where he is, he he threw the technicality at me, which is of course that you guys in 2013 in London yeah. after the 0 4 start were two and six. But there was something there to that answer more than what he gave. Meaning, I've been there before. Dot dot dot. Yeah. Do you follow me? And you see what I made of that. And you see what came of that and what yeah. almost came of that because you, annoying guy in the press conference room, <laughs> were there to cover it as well. Yep. Okay. Yep. So it, it, there's going to be a Mike Tomlin who's going to be defiant and whatever else when he gets into his moods. And then there's going to be the one who somehow magically turns this season into a – I can't even think of Okay. I, I don't – Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. And, you know, the other side, DK, is why mm. he probably went at you like this, man. It's probably because he may listen to us, and he understand we had that conversation, <laughs> too. That's what I'm going with, okay? He's like, hey. You go ahead and do that. You, you, I'm pointing at you, guy, with the black hoodie on. You do a pod with one of my former players that was part of one of those teams. And and being a part of that team, DK, this is, this is you know, the, one of those parts of it is it was miserable. And you know what? He didn't let us get out of it being miserable either. It was it was heavy. You know, like the pressure to win is huge in that city and inside of that building, first and foremost. Oh, there's no question about that. And even, you know, even today at his press conference, you know, he was asked a, a question uh, by one of our reporters at, at DK Pittsburgh Sports that uh, whether or not, you know, he still found it you know, to be a, an issue of development versus winning and whatever. And he said, I, the people that we have that we're developing, the younger people that we have are capable of winning. The yeah. two things can happen simultaneously. Go ahead. 
<laughs> DK, at first I was joking about him listening. Now I'm being like, do we need to check his YouTube or his Spotify or his Apple? Matter of fact, catch us on all those platforms, okay? Free okay, plug coach. there. You but do that, Coach. DK, did we not just say we this did. last week? We did. Uh, uh, about, look, it's young, but it's young and good. It's young, but, man, they're fighting. It's young, but they're not quitting. And that's the point in which he probably, you know, asked you that question or, or, or re uh, asked you that question, like, what do you mean by that? Because mm-hmm. – it's not like he's got a team full of quitters. It's not like you look at a team really trying to jockey itself into, as much as I bring it up, a top 10 pick. You got a team that by all means necessary will want to fight because whether you believe more in the coaches, the players, the scouting department, the GM, and the ownership, you say to yourself, my Steelers, we don't operate like this, right? And, and because of that, you got the guy that you think is your quarterback. You have one of the best young running backs in the league, despite what's in front of him blocking them in certain games. But even those guys have finally start to, as you said, it prime the gas a little bit more if you got a carburetor to, to get this car started. They, well, heck, they might even go to fuel inject it sooner or later, DK, as oh, far no as just question. starting the games fast. Now, if anybody's watching this and thinking to themselves, well, wait a second, what are they really doing that's some sort of sacrifice to rebuilding or developments or whatever? There are probably more cases like this on the team than you might think. The one that leaps out, let's not forget, is quarterback. Yeah. Yep. Okay? Because if this coach wanted to ride the safest possible rail line toward being 500 or 9-8 and eight or something like that, he might have been, at least in some people's eyes, better off just sticking with Mitch through the whole thing and saying, you know what, we'll get to Kenny in the future. I need yeah. to get my W's. Uh, you could say something similar about the wide receivers. You know who never, ever, ever plays? Miles Boykin. And Miles yeah. Boykin was a real live NFL wide receiver. He's a big part of special teams, a good guy, a big body, could, could actually contribute something yeah. to this offense. Yep. If, he'd, if he'd been out there instead of George Pickens, for whatever reason, they're afraid to throw to George Pickens. Well, they might well, not have been that way yeah. with Boykin. So there are examples like this that are kind of quiet and in the undercurrent where you would s- normally see him just say, listen, just put the guy out there who can help me the most to win that game on Sunday. Yep. They haven't done that. And to me, that's to their credit every bit as much as winning these past couple of games. Yes, indeed. It, it, it gets a little gritty, DK, and – uh, this is new to us, man. I know nobody wants to deal with it. You want to see the train continue on. But Philly had a couple of bad years, too, before they got back to this point. You know, I'm not trying to compare one to the other, but as far as, like, dropping off the map a little bit and then getting right back right, they did. They, they had a surge of, of, a surge of new, new young guys. Who would have ever thought Jalen Hurts was going to turn into that? Uh, the same people who picked Geno Smith for MVP. That's who. <laughs> When we come back, something that Moan just mentioned a couple minutes ago that just has to be magnified. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Ramon was kind enough to bring up, just kind of parenthetically there, Tomlin's Viral, now viral encounter with the fan in the Atlanta bowels there at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. For anybody who missed it, the there's a guy who's just like a he's a fan. He's by himself yeah. and he's got a phone on and he's he's recording uh, the coach as he walks by and he says something like. What was it? Let's hey, go. Hey, Coach Tomlin or something like that. And he let's, had his camera let's, up. Let's let's get him going. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> And the coach's response, as he's going through his first half, like like notes in that front he of had. him, in front of him, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and the coach's response was uh, something along the lines of "Leave me alone, I'm effing working" or something to that effect, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. No, man, I'm effing working. Yeah, he he said that. And so. It, there are people who are passing judgment on this in one direction or the other, okay? Now, forgetting that, okay, because everyone's free to their own opinion of a viral video. They don't need all the additional context or whatever. But, Moan, this guy, and you just kind of brought this up on a different subject near the end of the previous segment. This guy gets so locked in that he'll say stuff like that. And does anybody ever take it personally? 
uh, as far as the fans or no, 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 no. When you guys, when you were in the room and he would just be in a moment and you oh, said hello no. at the wrong time and no. he'd bark at you. No, I, no, no. You don't, you don't take that personal. Cause you got to separate the two, man. Like it, like he'll let you know up front. Like our livelihoods are at stake with all of this. If y'all suck, I got to fire you. And if I can't correct that, then I get fired too. Like that's another component of it too, DK. Like that response to me, number one, I, I, I really, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I get the fan interaction of what certain stadiums do with the exhibition of the former, uh, of the home team and the away team going through the tunnels. Yes. I, I get why it's a you it makes money yeah it's right it, by a, it's not it's pittsburgh doesn't have one no. just as, so i can share with people what you're talking about but there's a lot of these stadiums that the newer ones that down right by the tunnel they 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 have a club yeah it's of, a club basically people with a lot of money that are just kind of hanging out there and think that you're at their disposal as you're walking by yeah, and, and this takes you to so many different realms too, DK. Like when guys are in those modes, man, like again, the, the person you get right here ain't the person you would get on the field. And I think you would expect it to be that way too, right, DK? I would hope, actually. You would hope it to be yeah. that way. When you have a situation where you have, okay, a, a fans come out to Latrobe, which is beautiful, and they cheer you on from the stands, or they curse you out from the stands. It's beautiful, right? But mm-hmm. as soon as one of those fans want to come down on the field and do what you do as a professional. Oh, no. James Harrison's here to meet you. <laughs> then we're going to have a different conversation. The guy that wore Troy number that, that wanted to come out on the practice field. You remember that day at in, camp? In Latrobe, yes. Mm-hmm. And what was the wide receiver saying? Let him out here, please. Don't save him. <laughs> Send him to the Sharks. You remember them. You were around and you heard Let's us. Just let him out yeah. here, please. Please let him out here. Because... It's to Coach Tomlin's response wasn't a game. It wasn't for your enjoyment. The response you got is to a guy that was trying to do his job. The same way you would expect from a guy that's playing football out there, too. You never take that personal. And I thought the guy laughed towards the end. If anybody was pearl clutching, oh my, you oh, don't yeah. you don't get that side of what the business is. Like no. it is a game. And and for more the business, even more setting of, of the scenario here. You gotta understand there's 15 minutes of halftime. That's it. Okay. And you have to waste, in some cases, at least a handful of seconds waiting on the field as a head coach yep. to get to do a network uh interview with you know whoever that is, just holding the microphone there and says, Coach Tomlin, what did you think of your other? I thought it was terrible. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> okay. And then he walks around. Okay. But you yeah. get the, you go down a tunnel and everything else, and like you've started, man. You have started your work and in a mammoth stadium. Like yeah. the one that they have in Atlanta, it takes a while just to get from the field to, to your the, team to the locker room, which I can tell you from having done that stadium, the <laughs> circumference yeah. several times on Sunday, it's not close. Yeah. Well, that time matters. What he's looking at, that device that's in his hand, isn't there by accident. He's not checking his messages from home. No. Okay. He's doing no. work. Yeah. So the way he responds, is the part that I think people that he's dropping an f bomb or whatever. <laughs> the part that you don't take personally is this. I'm going to share with you a story I've never shared before. Go ahead. We're uh, this was on the south side, and there's a rule that uh, Mike Tomlin is technically available to the media after every practice in regular season, but no one actually does it because it's upon request. Okay, mm-hmm. so what it is, it's upon request at your own peril. Yeah. Okay, meaning he has <laughs> yeah. he has no interest in doing it. Okay, yeah. So one day, don't ask why. I, I was just in one of these moods, right? Absolutely. And I had a question to ask about Heinz Ward because he was starting to get used a lot less. It was in his final season. Okay? Yeah. And I'm I I put in the request with with Bert Loudon, head of media relations. He said, Bert, I, you know, I'd like to get Tom, and Bert gives me one of these looks like, do you really? yes please okay yeah so practice ends and i see bert and the head coach out there convert converging and i'm going yep here it comes here it comes (laughs) head coach walking my way with bert bert stands about i don't know about five feet or so behind him watching the scene ready to what ready to watch it go okay and the head coach 
just doesn't even say anything, just eyes like this looking <laughs> at me. Okay. And I start with my question. Heinz Ward, da 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 And he takes one bold sideways step to his right, starts moving forward in a big stride, and he yells out at the top of his lungs, I tried, Bert! I tried! <laughs> and goes into the room. It was unbelievable. Oh, and I stand dumb. there, and Bert looks at me and goes, <laughs> and I just I burst out laughing. <laughs> so, did I take the point is, did I take it personally? No. Did no. you take it personally, Moan, when he reamed you out? No. Which I'm sure he did. I'm he sure he did. did. Yeah. I tell the story, put me on blast my rookie year. That's the first my that's my first encounter of it. Like, hey Moan, you're getting worked. Okay. You're the don't take it guy in front of everybody in camp on the big board. Like this is a part of it. That, like, that was just the, oh, yeah. I had, like, I was a preferred, basically, uh, uh, undrafted. You know, I was one of those oh, guys. Yeah. They oh, had yeah. high expectations for me. I just didn't know it. And I go out there in the first day in pads, man, and I, I am, like, I got worked. Like, and it wasn't all bad, but it was just like, hey, get it together. And every day he had notes. But this day specifically, DK, we go into the team meeting room. And I knew I'd had one of those days, man, undrafted dude. I'm playing against Kiesel, Kersky, uh, uh, just everybody's just having a go at me. Hemp having a day at me. I'm just like, <laughs> Nick, like everybody you can think of, okay? It's a pretty good list anyway. Yeah, I, I mean, but, but that's the fire they threw me into. So mm-hmm. I get in there and I'm thinking, okay, maybe I got some grace, man. I'm just low on the totem pole. Nobody recognizes me. Lies. Because he sees everything. <laughs> because, again, he's got to go find talent. He's got to put together a good team. And, and if we you aren't it. If you <laughs> aren't it. <laughs> so we go into the meeting room at, at Latrobe, okay, St. Vincent College. And we're in the classroom. It's one of the bigger classrooms. And there's a <laughs> just fabricated whiteboard there with a screen projector screen first clip goes up day one camp or some crap like that number two don't take it he starts circling next clip me my mug shot that i took coming into the league ramon Fawcett, and at the top of it it had don't take it and then he proceeds to show clips of me getting worked in practice okay and just don't do this. And don't do this. And if you don't do this, and and that is that, and you want to talk about shrinking into oh a God. hole. Oh, wow. Okay. Now, it was two <laughs> things that could have happened, and one did. One of them could have been, I ain't going to make it. I quit. This is it. I ain't got no answers. This is terrible, right? Mm-hmm. And you never, we wouldn't be doing this podcast. You have written me up. Hey, first list of cuts. Ramon Foster tackle, Tennessee. Okay. Or if you don't take it personal and you receive the message, then you good. You understand? Look, it ain't going to be perfect, but we better fight. You better not look like this. And from that day forward, I fought. And what's crazy. So let's take that day, the third day in camp, the second or third day in camp to about game two, right? I'm going to late night snack at Latrobe all the way down the steps, all the way up to the other side by the weight room. Coach Tom is in the uh, weight room working out, and he sees me walking with a group of guys, and uh, <laughs> and he comes off of the treadmill because he can run towards the windows. There's open windows right there. He can run and see everything on camp. He gets off the treadmill in a, in a deep sweat, and he comes over to me. Hey, Big Moan, come here. I'm like, oh, Lord, what, what I do now? Mm-hmm. And he simply asks me, how you think you're doing in camp? I knew I had a few good days, and I, I was solid. I think I'm doing pretty good. He's like, yeah, I think you are. He's like, let's keep doing that. It looks good to me. Just do more of it. And at that moment, I was like, okay, we got something. Okay. This is So as much okay. as he, he can get yeah. you on the front end, if you understand what the message is, is what he's kind of trying to tell that guy, look, man, I'm trying to win this damn game. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, and, and, and there's been numerous guys he's had in those situations before, but mine specifically was just like, I could have DK. I'm undrafted. There was no reason to put any stock in me. No, it's it's it, the direct approach uh, to what he does 
certainly applies on the football field. And for anybody who thinks that he would do that, like at a fan fest or something, no. you know what I'm saying? Or the in a gro- the the grocery store, you know, somebody goes up to him at a giant eagle and says, Coach Tom, let's go Steelers. What do you think he's going to do? You think he's going to flip man, that? That's what he's he going to hit you with. He's, he's just going to go, we love. appreciate you. We appreciate yeah. you. It's going to be something like that. Okay. You, you're, you're, you're the reason that we do this, whatever. But in that moment, N O no. When we come back. Yeah, yeah. The only segment that matters. Hey, Mo. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. Time for the only segment that matters. And that's brought to you always by the Get Go Cafe and Market, where quality is at the core of every menu item three expert chefs fine-tune every detail so that every sub burger salad wrap drink and app is crafted for craveability order your favorite item at the get-go cafe and market today better believe it today's entry comes from yancey jenkins senior and yancey is in a little bit of a feisty mood moan <laughs> yeah here it comes yancey with school in school in college man let me hear it. here it comes Hey, Moan, I expected a better response from you being a former player in Georgia's situation. You know he circled this date when the schedule came out. He's back home. He's got family and friends in the stands. His Bulldogs just won the championship in the same building. He's hyped. He's stoked. And KP8 doesn't throw his way. Canada can't call his number. Tomlin's just watching, knowing we're playing in Georgia's backyard. I feel for the young man. Shame on this whole mess. Oh, that's fair, Yancey. That's so fair. I won't even front like it's not, man. That assessment right there of how it went down, of the why, for sure, is a part of it. I I, I wholeheartedly agree with you in that fashion, that you're going back to your college town. I'll be real with y'all. When we played in Tennessee or against the Titans, my mindset to my guys was, and they knew it, Fellas, I got to go live there in the offseason, man. I need this dub so I can go to those nice places and have dinner, and they're not looking at me sideways. Like, oh, look at him. We beat his team this year. I'm with you on that one. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but this is also the learning curve of what the league is sometimes, though, too. What, what if the they how. had gone at George? Yeah. It's the how. What, it's the how. It's, how, did, it, how did he react? How did he come it, off that sideline? How did he come off to his teammates and coaches? I ain't mad at him uh, for how he did that, man. Uh, I get it, and and I love how he wants to be a part of it, but it just wasn't in his plan last week. Whether that's Matt Canada, fine. Whether it was Kenny Pickett that just didn't go his way, man, fine. I know, and I'm in agreement with you, DK. There have, if he's your number one and we see the talent pool there to be number one, out. I mean, we see the talent there out of that talent pool to be number one, yeah, you do make a way for it. But you know me, I'm an offensive lineman. As long as we get a dub, that was my thing. I didn't care what happened. I've seen receivers rejoice after losing because they got their numbers. So you got to take my approach, though, too, Yancey, and be like, look, at my position, only thing that matters is a dub. And I still say to him, that may be a lesson in which, what if you got a number one corner? What if Jalen Ramsey's on you and they're throwing the ball to you? You still don't get it then. You still going to have that type of uh, frustration? They found a couple of ducks. They were able to – ducks by meaning weak guys on that Falcons defense, and they hit the tight end more than they did anybody else. They hit Pat. So the 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 the, the ego side of it, the diva side of what you're saying, I'm with that. I agree. I always wanted to beat the Titans whenever we played them because I had to live here. This is where I played college ball at. But within the team concept of it all, if you winning – to me, all that gets put to a side. That's why we, we've always kind of operated that. Look at the team in which I played it. Everybody did what they were supposed to do. Look at how you go about sustaining a good team. If it's coming to you, man, cool. We're good. Don't force us to get outside of our offense to absolutely make it about you. So that's the only part I push back on to you, Yancey, is I ain't even pushing back. I'm just making my point to be like, within the team concept, that ain't cool, but I get it. I ain't going to tell him not to want the ball because he's just that good. But that ain't how you operate on the day against the Falcons and what you got ducks, sitting ducks at other every other position that you can take advantage of. 
Mike Tomlin's response regarding Pickens at his press conference today was, and I've heard this line from him before, but anybody who hasn't will love it. I'd rather say whoa than sick him. I want a guy who wants to be a significant part of what it is that we do. Now, the appropriate and professional and mature way to express that we're growing and working on, and we'll continue to do that. But that spirit, that competitive spirit, the guy who wants the ball, I want that guy. I would imagine TJ wants to lay out the quarterback more. <laughs> That's <Yeah>. good stuff. <laughs> I mean, you see what, just, so he, 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 go ahead, DK. He, he, well, they all just, but he, they've recognized this trait in Pickens, yeah. obviously, since even before he was drafted, and they valued it. There's no, there's no danger arc no. here. I get the sense, Moan, that anytime a wide receiver misbehaves, that there's a fear around here that he's the next AB. Listen, there's one AB, okay? Yeah. The the Hillsborough County police know that there's one AB because they're currently searching for him this all over Tampa. actually true, yes. Okay? Leave AB in a category where he belongs, and that is only AB. That's so true. Let's, Every, people were comparing Juju to him because Juju tweeted a lot. Let's not do that. I'm with you on that because George is his own person. I've had dinner with the kid. He's he's got it together. He does. Yeah. And, it, and and I think what you saw is in what Coach Tomlin said too, though, DK, like when you do that in front of the world or in front of the nation, that outburst, he always says this, female dogging, okay, instead of cursing on here, that word right there is talking to people about your problems that can't solve them. He said his frustrations in front of everybody in the world and can't none of us solve them other than people inside that building, okay? So what he was saying is, I love it. Do it. But the proper way to do that is this. Either go to Matt Counter directly. Hey, coach, man, I'm working them. If you come my way, I got you. Or even after the game. Because I said, if the scenario fits and you're going up against one of the best corners in the, in the country, let's go, let's go young guy to young guy. Sauce Gardner versus yep. him. And let's say he can't get open on sauce. Are we still supposed to go to him? No. And, and what I'll finish by saying this is, catch me on Sunday evening or on the airplane back or Monday. Yeah, hey, Coach T, I want to ha yep. have a conversation with you. Okay, George, come to my office. What are we going to talk about? I want the ball more. Boom. You got it. In times in which I thought I, I should have been the starter in like year two or three, go to my coach. Hey, what do I need to do? You know what I'm saying? Well, how do I crack this starting lineup? What What's the conversation to be had? Yeah, and hey, coach, as long as I'm in here, what what were you what you what were you putting me at slot for? You've had me running. Hang on, no coach, no coach, sit yeah. down. Hey, hey, come yeah. back here, sit down, coach. Yeah, I I've been lining up outside all through yeah. my NFL rookie season. I've been running yeah. the same bleeping straight ahead pattern. By the way, statistically and film proven to be the NFL wide receiver with the most of those types of patterns of any wide receiver anywhere. And now all of a sudden you throw me in the slot and then you don't throw me the ball. Coach, coach, hey, 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 no, hey, I wasn't done. Yeah. Come back, coach. Yeah. Back. Yeah. That's what he's saying, right? Come <laughs> talk to me, I'm though. Saying. That's what you're saying. <laughs> I'm yeah. just laying it all on that <laughs> Canada. <laughs> uh, but he didn't push away from it, right? In those moments, though, that's what's appropriate, man. Uh, so, hey, Yancey, I, I absolutely enjoyed that question. That's good stuff. Let's do it again tomorrow, man.